Welcome to my channel. I've been getting so many requests lately that I don't even know where to begin. But I've decided to respond to uh, one user named ZILL7711 who asked this question. I don't understand the term born again. Perhaps you can explain it. So that's what I'm going to do. But before I do that, I have to thank each and every one of you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for commenting on them. Thank you for sharing them. Thank you for liking them. And thank you especially to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. It continues to grow and I continue to be amazed by the growth. I just am stunned that this many people want to hear what I have to say. So let's talk about this. What does it mean to be born again? The first thing I want to do is I want to read a verse to you. Whoops, <laughs> I have the wrong one up here. <clears throat> there is a verse in the New Testament, and what I'm showing you now is how you can search for these things. What I'm searching for is search the word to see if these things are true. Because there's a specific verse that I want to read to you. It's Acts 17.11. And I have a reason for reading this verse. It says, Now the Berean Jews were of, <clears throat> were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. The reason I'm reading this verse to you is because that's what I want you to do. I'm not going to give you a bunch of verses. I'm just going to explain to you what's going on. And I'm going to let you look them up for yourself. This site that I'm on is called BibleHub.com. But there's other sites on the internet where you can search the Bible as well. I like this one because it gives you lots of different versions. Uh, as you can see, if you, if you can see this page, it has the New International Version, the New Living Translation, the English Standard Version, the Berean Standard Bible, and so forth and so on. There's quite a few translations. If you scroll down here, you can see King James, New King James, New American Standard, NASB, NASR, or NASB, 1977, Legacy Standard Bible, Amplified Bible, so forth, so on. There's quite a few. I mean, you can see the list is very long. <clears throat> and I'm just reading the first one. I'm not, I'm not that concerned about what version of the Bible that you use, although there are some that are better than others. But what I want to do is I want to answer, answer ZILL7711's question. He says he doesn't understand the term born again, and perhaps I can explain it. That's what I'm going to attempt to do. In the Old Testament, if you read in Genesis, you read the story of Adam and Eve. And if you read it carefully, you will see that God says, In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Shalt is an absolute. And yet, when Adam and Eve ate from the apple, they didn't die. So what is that verse talking about? Well, when God created man, Adam and Eve, he created a being with three parts, a body, a soul, and a spirit. The spirit comes from God, the body comes from the earth, and the soul is the breath of life that's breathed into a human being when they're born. Remember that, three parts. The two parts, body and soul, have five senses. Taste, touch, smell, hearing, and what's the other one? Taste, touch, a sight. Taste, touch, sight, hearing, and smell. Those are the five senses. And men use those five senses to 
detect things, to determine what's going on, to make decisions about actions they need to take, so forth and so on. The, the spirit is what some people call a sixth sense. And what it is, is a direct connection to God. If you have God's spirit in you, you can talk to God and he will talk to you and you will hear him. Now, that's not to say that he can't do that if you don't have the spirit, but it's much, much easier if you do. So, Adam and Eve were born, or were created, with body, soul, and spirit. And when they sinned in the garden, they lost their spirit. That's what died. So then God said, the first Adam was sinful, but I'm going to send a second Adam who is pure. And he is going to take on the sins of the world and die on your behalf because it's, it's given to every man to die. Now, if you're, if you're not familiar with the Bible, just search for some of these phrases that I'm using because they're straight out of the Bible. And you can figure this stuff out for yourself. You're smart enough to do it. You don't need me to give you verses. But he sent the second Adam to save man by dying on his behalf because the sentence for every man on earth was death. And the only way that sentence could be lifted was for someone to die on their behalf. Otherwise, every man would have had to carry out this or would have had to have that sentence carried out on him individually. If you read throughout the Old Testament, if you just search for the word spirit, in the Hebrew it's ruach, R-U-A-C-H, you will find that the Bible describes the spirit in the Old Testament as being upon men, not in them, upon them. And the spirit can be taken away from them if they misbehave. So a lot of the prophets had God's spirit upon them. And when they prophesied, they were prophesying on God's behalf. They were, they were transmitting messages from God to the people. When Jesus Christ came along, he was the perfect man. To, not to get too technical, but basically what happened was God created a sperm inside of Mary and impregnated an egg in Mary, and that egg became Jesus Christ. And because his father provided the sperm through a creative act, he was the same nature as his father. But he still was human because he had the human side from his mother, you inherit half your genes from your father, half your genes from your mother. So he had to make conscious decisions and he had freedom of will and he had the ability to disobey God if he wanted to. He chose not to. And when he died and gave up his life, you'll notice if you read the crucifixion story that Jesus Christ was not killed he gave up his life on the cross. He himself died. After he was dead, the, the uh, centurion put a spear through his side, but he was already dead at that time. You can read all this for yourself. So Jesus Christ died, and on the third day he was risen from the dead and ascended into heaven after a period of time of appearing to various people. And once he did that, the Holy Spirit became available to human beings to be placed inside of them. There's a verse in Ephesians that talks about God in Christ in you. Once again, man became a three-part being or had the ability to become a three-part being, a being of body, soul, and spirit. When you die, your body just rots. Your soul, you just take your last breath, you exhale, and the soul is gone. But your spirit goes back to God. Now, because you have body, soul, and spirit, you are once again able to communicate with God, able to get information from God, able to perform 
miracles, able to perform anything that Jesus Christ could perform. Jesus Christ himself said, Greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. So it's possible for any human being to do things that Jesus Christ did, and even more. You can read in the, in the New Testament where <clears throat> some of the uh, apostles raised people from the dead. Just like Jesus Christ did. Now, my son-in-law, who is, I'm not sure what I would call him, I guess maybe a, a bitter Christian or an agnostic or something. He says, you know, who changes water into wine these days? Who raises people from the dead these days? Well, if you start looking for miracles across the world, you'll find that they are still happening. But the devil don't want you to think they're not. But getting back to the subject of this post. To be born again means to have the Spirit of God placed inside you. The difference between what was done with Adam and Eve and what is done with a Christian is that the Spirit that's placed in you is eternal and cannot be removed. Once you are born again, you're going to heaven. It's an absolute 100% guarantee and there is nothing that you can do that will keep you from going to heaven. You can't sin your way out of being born again. You can sin a lot, and we do, because we're human beings. We're flawed. But you cannot remove the spirit that God places in you. That is his gift of grace. It's not something you earn. It's something that's given to you because you fulfilled what Romans 10, 9, and 10 says. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That's the only two requirements there are to be born again. The only two. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to do communion. You don't have to pray all day. You don't have to do anything else except confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord of your life and Believe that God raised him from the dead. That's it. If you've done that, you're born again. You may not be aware of it. You may not realize it, but you are. And if you think about your life, if you are born again, I'm sure you can think of times when you did or said things that you couldn't figure out, why did I do that or why did I say that? but they ended up being very positive for you. It, it ended up in a positive outcome. That's because God's Spirit is working inside of you. To be born again means to become again, just like Adam and Eve, a three-part being, body, soul, and spirit. So now you not only have the five senses of the human, of touch, taste, smell, hearing, and seeing, but you have the sixth sense, sense of the spiritual realm. And now you can see and understand things in a way that a, what's called a natural man in the Bible, you can look that up too, will never do. A natural man will never understand these things because he doesn't have the spirit in him to understand them. He has to get that spirit inside of him before he can gain that kind of understanding. So again, just so that we're clear. To Zill 7711, he says, I don't understand the term born again. Perhaps you can explain it. Well, I hope that I have. But once again, just to make sure it's clear, to be born again means to have God's spirit placed inside you and a 100% guarantee that you're going to heaven. You now have back the sense that Adam and Eve had that they gave up through their sin. And you have it because Jesus Christ bore that sin. He took that sentence of death on himself and died for the entire world. I hope this clears it up. If you have any questions, obviously, you can put them in the comments. I will put a link to Bible Hub uh, in the in the description so that you can use that if you want to. Like I said, there's several other places you can just Google for Bible verses and find the other places. 
And you can do your own research on this. But once you become born again, you have a sense of what's right and wrong in a way that a quote, quote, natural man never will. You, you can just, it's like you can smell evil. And you can tell when something isn't right. Now, <laughs> it's certainly within your power to ignore that and to not take advantage of it. But why would you do that? If you have that extra power, why would you not use it? Why would you not take advantage of its existence and use it to make your life more, more powerful and more abundant? That's what I've been doing for 60, 70 years. And look, I'm going to be real honest with you. I don't go to church. I haven't found a church yet that, that satisfied my desire to know the truth. Most churches are what we call religious. And religion is man-made. Christianity and being born again is God-made. And there's a difference, a big difference. So, you know, if you like going to church, there's nothing wrong with that. You can certainly get blessed by the experience. But if you really want to live a life that's centered around God, you have to do that yourself. You have to do that in your own head. You have to what, do what the Bible says, renew your mind constantly, to remind yourself constantly, I'm not just a natural man. I have a third part back. I have my spirit. And I have the ability to talk to God and to listen to God and to get advice from God. And I have the ability to discern things. That's another word you can search for in the Bible. I have the ability to tell the difference between right and wrong, between good and evil. I have the ability to see and deal with devil spirits and keep them out of my life. You have all of these things because you're born again. You have the Spirit of God inside you and that means you have all the power that Jesus Christ had and more according to Christ. Something to think about, huh? Well, again, I hope this answers your question, Zill7711 and anyone else that had the question. And of course, if you want more, want to know more, or you want to discuss it, put it in the comments, and I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I can take some things offline if you want. You, you can get my email address from my channel, and email me personally if you have questions. Uh, but you can do it in the comments too. I'm not afraid to share my faith with other people, as you can see. I'm not afraid to discuss the Bible with other people. I'm not afraid to defend God no matter what the atheists or the agnostics might say. And there is a reason for that. If you look at my channel, and we're going to do that right now. I'm going to go back over here, and we're going to look at my channel. I have a video that I created a long time ago. And I should be able to find it, hopefully. Uh, no, that's not it. <laughs> um, let's see, how can I get the complete list of all my videos? Well, that's interesting. All right, let me go to YouTube Studio. I can find it that way for sure. Just go to content and go back to the very beginning. Let's see. Uh, bear with me while I find this because it's important to me that you know about this uh, let's see I have 175 how can I get all the way to the end I just keep going huh all right we'll just keep going because this was one of the earliest videos that I did Oh, you know what I can do? Shoot, I should have thought of this before. 
I can just go to my playlist. Okay. Scroll down. Created playlists. Walking with God. There we go. I walked over to the bottom uh, of the cliff. I there's the video. The God proved waist, his existence to me. My eyes. I did I this said, God, uh, several months I ago. I can't do this without Four you. months ago, to be exact. You're going to have to show me what... And I have both a short and a full video. I'll put the links to both. But I talk about an experience that I had in my life where I actually had interaction from God that proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that he exists. And I've never, ever doubted God since. So I'll put that in the links, in, in the description. I'll put links to that in the description so that you can watch that as well if you want. That explains a little bit about my life and how I've uh, walked with God over the years and why I am such a uh, firm believer in God. And hopefully this will answer any questions that you might have. As for you, my followers, <clears throat> as always, I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you will be healthy and that you will live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. And I also pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you personally will be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving is important, you will make your request known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, all understanding, will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.